Good morning, everyone. Welcome you in worship this morning at Coronado Community United Methodist. Glad to see all of you here with us this morning. Those of you here in person, those of you who may be watching us online, we're glad you're here too. And we want you to know where we are. We're in New Smyrna Beach on the beach side, 201 South Peninsula. And we hope we might get an opportunity to meet you here sometime in the future. Uh, this morning, our pastor, uh, Lisa, is on vacation. And we're blessed to have Reverend Joyce Alexander here this morning to bring us a message. <clears throat> so we invite you to take a deep breath in. In the name of the Father. And another deep breath. In the name of the Son. And a deep breath. In the name of the Holy Spirit. As we prepare our hearts for worship. We invite you now to take your, the blue hymn books in the back of each row. Yep. And a reminder that we're going through this uh, period where we're, our main projector is not working. We're going through repairs and purchasing new equipment. So until then, we have this screen over here, if you can see this, or your hymn books. And we're going to sing three hymns to open up this morning. We start with number 128. 128, he leadeth me, O blessed thought. And we invite you to stand as you're able as we sing together. And we're going to sing verse 1 and 3.
382, 382. Have that own way, Lord. We're going to sing verse 3 and verse 4. join together in our statement of faith this morning. It's on page 883, 883, and it is a statement of faith of the United Church of Canada. We read together. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now we take a moment to turn to our neighbors, say hello, and pass the peace of Christ. Okay, we're inviting Larry Gillum forward now. He will be leading us in prayer as we prepare our hearts for prayer, singing together our cares chorus.
today's prayer of the people. Spirit of truth, come live in us. Rest on us and ready us, seeing as you see your mind and heart within us, appearing and hearing your counsel, O wisdom of the ages, divine and life-giving and intimate. Speak, Holy One, we are listening. Let's pause for a few moments to listen to God. Spirit of truth, come live in us. Rest on us and release us. Empowered by your might, steadfast and vulnerable, strength of soul and character, strength of virtue and honor, strength to build up and make way. Your truth pouring forth, generous and creative, awakening and instructing and sustaining. I invite your prayers for healing in our world. Spirit of truth, come live in us. We ask this humbly, recognizing the price of this gift, the death and resurrection of our Jesus. We ask this reverently for your honor and glory alone. Come, Spirit of truth, help us live the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'll ask our ushers to come forward. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, we thank you for all the many blessings that you have given to us. And we know that all we have is really yours and from you. Lord, accept these, our offerings today, and use them for your kingdom, for your work in this place and this time. In Christ's name, amen.
And good morning. <laughs> it is always a pleasure to bring the message to you, and it is this morning. We will be in two, two places in Scripture if you wish to look those up in your pew Bibles or the Bible you brought from home or on your phone. We'll be in Matthew 4 and in Galatians 5. We will get to those a little later. I'm drawing for this message from a book called Jesus Unpainted, recently published by my friend, Reverend Dr. Steve Harper. In this book, Dr. Harper talks about furniture in a parsonage that had been painted lime green. The Harpers had to strip off layers of paint to find the real wood underneath. And this becomes a metaphor for seeking out the real Jesus. But I was reminded of another story from long ago when I was a child. You know that's long ago. <laughs> In 1949, my parents bought a restaurant in Florence, Alabama, and set about, it's called the Chatterbox Cafe. <laughs> and they set about cl cleaning it up and demolishing concrete booths. But tucked away in a corner was a little wooden table with high-backed benches. Mother decided she could save that little table, and she took it home and set to work. But the first thing she had to do, if you ever looked underneath a restaurant table, <laughs> she had to scrape off years worth of dried up chewing gum. Then she could scrape and sand and get rid of the layers of enamel to find the lovely wood underneath. Generations of my family ate at that little table. It became the kids' table for family gatherings. Many good memories, relationships centered around that little wooden table. We will see how this metaphor applies. It is about seeing Jesus, real Jesus, not the paint and other stuff we have stuck on. And it is about living like Jesus. First, let's go to scripture. Matthew chapter 4, we're just preceding the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus has just come from the temptation in the desert back to Galilee to begin his ministry. We're picking up at verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. Immediately. They left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God 
and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all the sick, those who were afflicted with various diseases and pains, people possessed by demons or having epilepsy or afflicted with paralysis, and he cured them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. In this passage, we find Jesus talking about living into the kingdom of God. And we see three steps, repentance, following, and learning. First, repent, a verb, something we do. But repent is not just about shame and guilt. That interpretation makes us think, well, I haven't killed anybody, so I'm okay. (laughs) And to think of a one-time event. But that thinking is part of what is covering up the real Jesus. The Greek word here is metanoia, enlarging our minds, looking at the world in a new way, seeing the kingdom of God. We need to do that continually, not just once. It is scraping off the chewing gum, keeping us from finding the real Jesus. We all have baggage Chewing gum stuck to the underside of our tables. Are there people we resent? Old grudges we carry? Are there things we learned in childhood we need to confront and scrape away? I grew up in Alabama in the 50s and 60s. Racism was a part of the air we breathed. I had to recognize that and confront it in order to move past it. And once we have scraped off the old gum stuck to our tables, then we can set about finding the real wood, sanding and working at the layers of paint. To find the real Jesus, we set about following him. Jesus began his ministry by calling a community of followers. followers. When Jesus called the fishermen, they immediately, notice that word was repeated, immediately left their nets, their means of earning a living, and they followed him. What in our lives keeps us from following Jesus? Have we been told to hate groups of people? Have we learned fear and hate rather than love? What grabs our hearts, adding layers of paint instead of scraping it away? Is it our careers? What sort of house we own? What car we drive that defines who we are, rather than Jesus? Certainly we have to make a living and have a place to live and transportation. But these things should not define us. Jesus should. As we follow Jesus, we learn. Matthew said Jesus went about teaching and healing folks. And as we learn from Jesus... We see new ways enlarging our minds. Jesus was healing and teaching folks from all over. They were not all Jewish. Some were Greeks, some were Gentiles, some were even possessed by demons. But we see from Jesus' actions that he loved them all. And when we learn that Jesus is love, we begin to see the real Jesus. Just as we begin to see the real wood 
as we sand away the paint and we respond in awe because the real wood is beautiful, but the real Jesus is awesome. Matthew says Jesus was teaching about the kingdom of God. That's not a place or a political thing. It is a way of living. I first understood what the kingdom is when I went to Cuba years ago. There I found people devoted to God, to Jesus, people living in the spirit, loving and caring for one another in spite of the difficulties they encountered to do so. They were trying to live like the real Jesus, and they were doing it in community. Just as Mother's real wood table became a center for family. Jesus calls us to follow him and live into God's kingdom. Finding the real Jesus, we want to live like him, be like him. We want to live a Christ-like life. Paul's letters often speak of living in a Christ-like way. Remember a few weeks ago, Pastor Lisa spoke of having the mind of Christ. Paul describes living into a Christ-like pattern in his letter to the churches in Galatia. And we're reading now from the fifth chapter of Galatians, beginning at verse, verses 13 and 14. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become enslaved to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then going on down to verses 22 and 23. After Paul has listed some of the things we need to scrape away and leave behind, he goes on. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. We are free to follow the real Jesus, to walk in his footsteps, to become more like him. Living into the kingdom means doing that, living into a Christ-like community and loving our neighbor. We're not left alone in doing this, the Spirit helps us to become more Christ-like. As the Spirit works within us, we call that grace, by the way, our lives are changed. We begin to reflect the real Jesus. And the external expressions of that change are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, or some translations read goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These things are the fruit of the inner change. You know, I've read this passage many times, even preached on it several times, but Dr. Harper points out something I never noticed. Paul writes, the fruit of the Spirit is... There is a singular subject, fruit, and a singular verb, is. The fruit of the Spirit is love. The other things listed, joy, peace, kindness, and so on, are expressions of love. Jesus said to abide in him is to abide in love. And we read earlier in that same chapter where Paul said the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
Jesus unpainted is love. We have all too often covered over Jesus' love with layers of enamel paint called dogma, rules, and legalism. We need to strip that away to see the love. In order to become Christ-like, we must love. In our family where we gather around little wooden tables, in our community, our church, our neighborhood, and beyond, to all the world, even our enemies. True, unpainted love, the real Jesus, is not a grumpy old sourpuss who judges everybody. The real love that reflects the real Jesus is joyful. Real, unpainted love is not at war with everyone. Love reflects peace. Real, unpainted love is patient, both with ourselves and with others. It does not ignore injustice, but works with patience and perseverance to change it. And that includes cutting ourselves a little slack now and then. We let the Spirit work within us. When we yield to the Spirit, we do better. And of course, real love is kind. Being mean to people really doesn't get us anywhere. Real, unpainted love is kind to family, community, and strangers. The real Jesus traveled around doing good. Real love shows in goodness. Real love is faithful, or you might say trustworthy, committed to the values and hope of a life reflecting Christ. Real love is gentleness, caring, empathy, doing good for others. And finally, real love reflects self-control, not egocentrism. Living into love, living in the Spirit, living into the life reflecting the unpainted Jesus is to live a life reflecting love in all these ways. It is to have stripped away all the negative, painted on layers of legalism, exposing the good wood of grace. It is to live abundantly around an ever-enlarging table which has found the good wood, welcoming more and more the children of God, those whom Jesus loves. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, help us to live a life that reflects your love in all we do. Help us to go from here as kingdom people, forming community, caring for and loving one another, and loving our neighbor. Amen. And I'll invite Larry back for announcements. Morning, y'all. Our summer work, work our summer worship schedule will begin Father's Day, Sunday, June sixteenth. There will be one joyful service at ten a.m. in the sanctuary. We'll continue with worship at nine thirty and eleven fifteen for the next two weeks. Next Sunday, June second, we'll celebrate graduates. If you or a loved one graduated from high school, trade school, earned your GED, or graduates or graduated um, graduate school last December or this May, please send that person's photo and information to the church office by May 27th, so we can recognize them. We'll also recognize our many scholarship recipients. Our robust scholarship program is made possible by generous donations to our endowment and by those who choose to mentor our recipients. The Journey in Spirituality Discussion Group is starting a new book, Wrestling with Doubt, 
finding faith. This is by Adam Hamilton. Now, now would be a great time to join them. They meet on Sundays between the worship services in room 116. Thank you, Larry. We're going to sing two hymns of response this morning. Our first one is number 338. Number 338, Where He Leads Me. And we invite you to stand as you're able as we sing together verse 1. one, two, and five. What is our mission? Building community rooted in God's love, inviting all to grow in Christ, engaging with service and compassion. And now, may you go from here filled to overflowing with the love of God, the love of Jesus, and live a bit more like Jesus this week. Go in peace, go in love, go in faith. Amen. We join together in singing our closing chorus, Go Now in Peace.
peace, everyone.